Hello YouTube, this is Robert Ness 816 and I'm coming at you with another uh, radio video, but this one is more or less an educational type video. Um, so this is the Texan 2P3 kit radio. This is an AM only, uh, I think medium wave radio. Um, this one retails for about $27 on Amazon and eBay. Um, some people will sell it for like $35. I don't recommend buying it from those people, but uh, Texan themselves on their website recommends uh, $25. So um, you could buy it from them plus shipping, or you can buy it from Amazon or eBay, depending on the seller, for about $27. Um, it does come in a variety of colors. So this deep red is the most common, but it does also come in black which is kind of hard to find, and a uh, kind of like a turquoise color, which is also hard to find. Um, but this is going to be the most common, and as far as a learning tool and a quality uh, radio, this is actually really good. Um, so audio-wise, it's actually very loud and clear. Um, tuning selectivity on this radio is actually really good. Um, of course, the selectivity uh, really depends on the person building it, though, too, because remember, you have to basically put everything together on this radio so uh, tuning comes down to how good the person is that's assembling it and uh, yeah basically it's down to down to you as, as, a, as a radio uh, assembler so this was my first time ever building a radio um, I've never actually done this before I built um, well I kind of assembled those pre-made uh, radio shack ones that use the uh, little wires with the springs that you put on and stuff like that so those are you know simple basic things but this one uh, from an educational perspective is good because it teaches you about different uh, resistor values, uh, capacitor values and types, uh, diode values, um, lots of different things, uh, soldering, assembly, so definitely pretty neat. Um, so it's really just a basic AM radio, nothing really too special about it. So you do get a headphone jack that is actually in dual mono, so you'll get mono out of the left and right uh, speakers, which is awesome on your headphones. Uh, comes with a nice one watt speaker, so you get a nice loud uh, audio. The plastic case of this thing is actually very nice. It's actually a pretty thick plastic and it's very sturdy. And the overall weight of this radio is actually pretty good for what it is. It's actually fairly heavy. Um, to compare it to it, actually, this old Panasonic is actually about the same weight wise, so it's definitely. Um, good in that regard so they didn't really cheap out with the components here there is a little bit of integration going on with this radio so the audio amplifier is based on a single IC with uh, of course you have your surrounding uh, support components in there but the rest of it is like kind of old school um, so I'll take this radio apart and I'll just show you what the insides look like and uh, plenty of other videos showing you what this radio looks like too but I guess it's unique to see how uh, each person kind of assembles it too, because I see a little bit of uh, differences there. So, very basic. So if I stand up here, you can kind of see how each of the stages work. So you have your mixing circuit here, uh, your first IF stage and your second IF stage. This is your detector stage here, and this is your audio amplifier, which is based on a single IC. And then you have your surrounding uh, capacitors around here too. Um, so really very simple and then of course you have your ferret rod antenna here which is actually nice and large which is something I can't say about a lot of uh, newer radios where they really seem to skimp out on this part um, but yeah so very uh, simple design nothing really too complicated um, again I've never built a radio before so this was kinda new to me but I have uh, some experience with assembling electronics and uh, yeah it was basically a th about two and a half three hours to put this together I kind of double and triple checked everything just to make sure I didn't make any mistakes and uh, I really kind of took my time as far as uh, adjusting all the stages just so I can make sure I got like you know the best um, sensitivity out of it as far as receiving stations um, so definitely a uh, fun project so I'll just put it back together now. I'm going to actually end this video with a, uh, a kind of a, a band sweep here, just going over um, comparing this kit radio here to the uh, Panasonic as far as how uh, good it works. So we'll just put all this back together. So there is one thing that I do want to point out in the manual, and this might help other people. 
So I have read other reviews where they say they put the radio together and it doesn't work. And that's either down to um, user error or they didn't uh, read the manual as far as what, it's, um, what it contains. So when you're doing the final assembly stages of this radio, um, basically you have three uh, points here that you need to check. So each one of these IF cans here has a, a solder bridge that needs to be closed. So they're labeled A, B, and C. And in the instructions, you can see A, B, and C. And basically, if you don't bridge these solder points here, the radio is not going to work. Also, you need to make sure that each one of these solder bridges here, uh, before you solder them, is going to read uh, about 3.1 volts, or at least somewhere around there. And you can adjust those pots to get 3.1 volts or around 3.1 volts. And uh, you want to make sure that that's all equal before you finish doing anything. If you don't get anywhere near that, like say if you read this one and it's at like 2 volts while these are at like 3.1 or half volt or something like that, then obviously you messed up somewhere along the lines. And you have to go back and uh, see what you, what you messed up on. Um, so if you don't assemble anything correctly, the radio is not going to work. And it goes for, say, this radio too. Like if I put um, new resistors in it or new capacitors or whatever, and I don't put anything back together um, correctly, then it's not going to work. So the same thing holds true for this. So yeah, there are certain components in here that are uh, sensitive as far as polarity goes. So the diodes in the radio are all sensitive as far as polarity goes. Um, your electrolytic capacitors are all sensitive as far as polarity goes. Um, so you have to pay attention to that. Even these uh, transistors right here, even though it's, um, this is a filter, but these transistors right here are all sensitive as far as polarity goes. So you have to kind of pay attention to all that stuff. And if you put anything together wrong or backwards, it's not going to work. Um, also with these IF cans here, you see how they're all different colors, red, yellow, and black. If you put them in any wrong order, then it's not going to work or it'll work, but you'll have a very tough time getting it to actually work properly. Um, and also your selectivity is also based off of how good you can tune this antenna for lower frequencies and how good you can tune the first and second IF stages and mixing stage um, after the fact. So that's all um, relative to how good you are as far as having a, a sensitive ear for um, you know being able to hear these different stations and whatnot. Um, also having a secondary radio like this one helped out a lot too in the, li in the alignment process because I was able to kind of match up um, all the stations based on the dial on this radio to what the uh, dial on my other radio was so that all the stations kind of aligned up when I was adjusting the uh, the tuning capacitor here. So just some things to kind of um, think about there, you know, basically double check, triple check everything to make sure that you're assembling the radio right before you go ahead and you, you know, you blame the kit for you know, being a piece of crap or whatever. Um, so as far as comparing it now, I'll just compare this radio to this old Panasonic. Um, so this Panasonic here is maybe not something good to compare it to. This is probably about 40 something years old. Uh, I have not done anything to it besides put a new battery in it and clean up the, uh, the volume dial on it. But um, it is basically a very basic uh, AM radio, just like this one is. Um, also, another thing too is aligning up this volume wheel. So I got this one perfectly centered, and that's gonna be a little bit of uh, trial and error. So don't solder in the board for the volume wheel immediately after you uh, you know put everything together. Basically, fit it in the case before you do anything. So that's important. All right, so without any more blabbering, we'll just do a little bit of a uh, comparison. All right, guys, so now we're going to end the video with a band sweep of both radios. I'm going to go kind of quickly between the two of them. Um, so both of these radios are capable of picking up many more stations than what I'm going to probably do with them, but I guess I'll give you like a rough idea. And then I'll cap it off with a uh, kind of like an alignment comparison too to kind of show you how good I was able to uh, get the uh, dial on this thing aligned. Um, so we'll start off with the 2P3 and with the uh, Panasonic, and then we'll close it with some final thoughts.
Eating an MVP light when a guy does something that we just don't see anymore. And we're going to continue taking it. This is your time. Assess genetically to make sure you keep it all. FedEx, the IRS. We're a massive selection of thousands of Right, there, there could be something to it. Wins for more on that. In Vegas. And see Billy Mira and the a couple, two stations towards the end there that are always a little sensitive or finicky, I guess I should say. So now we'll do the old Panasonic. This is a uh, Panasonic R1077. So these are actually still um, kind of like a dime a dozen. Pretty easy to find. Pretty similar, honestly, between the two of these. So now we'll just put both of them on, uh, I guess, 770. So you can kind of hear how my phone interferes with uh, both radio hosts. But yeah, so the alignment is pretty damn good. So I'd say hey, that's pretty good. What size is little Evan? Uh, who knows? Maybe a cute medium. Ah, oh. oh, that pun up. And Jacqueline. I never know. So in closing, um, definitely a very fun radio kit. And um, as you saw, definitely a very sensitive radio kit, especially compared with uh, what I would call a, a pretty good uh, older Japanese radio. So I, you know, definitely can't complain as far as the end product because I feel like it was definitely worth the price both from a uh, educational perspective and a uh, parts um, or build quality perspective as well as far as the uh, materials used and whatnot. Um, if anyone from Texan does end up watching this video, which I doubt but uh, always hopeful for something like that, um, consider making an AM and FM kit radio. So maybe something along the lines of like um, like a 70s or 80s style uh, as far as that, um, you know, that'd be kind of neat. 
but uh, definitely, you know, don't limit uh, your kits to just like one basic kit. It would be neat if you had a couple different ones to go by. So uh, if you made like a slightly larger AM FM kit radio, that would be pretty neat. So um, definitely an, a very fun project, a uh, good learning experience. And if anyone, again, is out there looking for a kit radio, I would definitely recommend these because as far as I know, this is the only kit radio that comes in a nice case like this that still has... Uh, an English instruction manual. So uh, thanks for watching, guys. Tell me what you think.